Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to Swaraja. Today I am with the BJP candidate for New Delhi Lok Sabha constituency, Basuri Swaraj. Basuri, thank you so much for speaking with us. I know it's been a very busy sh uh, schedule for you. How's it going in Delhi? Uh, it's been going uh, incredibly well. I'm very grateful to the people of Delhi for the kind of love, affection and blessings that they are showering on me. It's been 76 days of relentless campaign. And I know that uh, all this affection and all these blessings that are being showered on me stem from the people of Delhi's, I would say, unwavering commitment and faith in the leadership of Narendra Modi. His very beneficial schemes that have permeated right down to the ground level, as well his vision of a Vixit Bharat, which resonates with the people of Delhi tremendously. That is all which is being translated into blessings for Kwame. I've heard your speeches, you know, in a couple of rallies now, Anukat Sabhas as we call it. It looks like you were always prepared for this and I'm sure your parents have also had a great influence on this. So, you know, when was the first time that you actually thought about getting into politics? You are from a political family, but did you ever imagine yourself in politics uh, from a young age? Thank you for the compliment, but uh, I'll be very honest, it happened all of a sudden. Uh -huh. I was serving the party for over a decade as a lawyer mm -hmm. and uh, sort of assisting the party in cases in court. Uh, suddenly, I got a phone call where I was asked to join as a co-convener in the legal cell in Delhi, BJP. After some time, I was asked to serve as a secretary of the Delhi BJP. And suddenly, on 2nd of March, I found out from television, just like the rest of us, that the party has fastened a new responsibility on me, which is of being the Pratyashi or the candidate from New Delhi right. Lok Sabha seat. Tell us a little bit about your constituency because it has some really great places, but also you face a little bit of a challenge because many legislators belong to the Amani party. So in terms of the good things about your constituency, the challenges that your constituency faces and uh, what possibly you have as a candidate challenges and how you are willing to tackle them. Uh, so it's a them. beautiful eclectic mix of mm -hmm. uh, of linguistic communities, of religious communities, in terms of economic strata. I would say that if Delhi is the heart of Bharat, then New Delhi's uh, parliamentary constituency is the heartbeat of that heart. Right. And uh, in terms of challenges, certainly there's words. I won't say it's a challenge, but certainly an issue. There are two issues which are very uh, crucial. The first one is that for about a decade now, all the MLAs are that of Ahmadmi Party. Right. Majority of the Parshads are of the Ahmadmi Party. Mm -hmm. But it seems that not much work has been done on the ground. Mm -hmm. And therefore, people of Delhi are quite disillusioned by the Ahmadmi Party. And uh, if, if I am given an opportunity to be elected and serve the people as a member of parliament, I will ensure that I address their concerns to the best of my ability. The second issue is that there are many beneficial Modi administration schemes mm -hmm. which the Honorable Chief Minister Shri Arvind K. Jivalji has disallowed their implementation in Delhi due to right. selfish politics, like Ayushman Bharat. Mm -hmm. In Ayushman Bharat, the beneficiary is granted free health cover up to 5 lakh rupees annually. Mm -hmm. And you know that now uh, the Honorable uh, Prime Minister in Modi 3.0 taken a pledge mm -hmm. to expand the yeah. ambit of Ayushman Bharat to include transgender communities yeah. as well as all senior citizens above the age of 70 years of yeah. age. But Delhiites are deprived, so I will ensure, if I am elected, mm -hmm. that even if it means knocking at the court's door, mm -hmm. that Delhiites do not remain deprived and such beneficial schemes mm -hmm. like Ayushman Bharat are implemented in Delhi as well. Although every candidate like I've travelled across seven to eight states in the last two months, and it's very interesting to see what the candidate actually says, right? And New Delhi, it's a seat where superstars have uh, contested and a lot of big names have contested. So it must be truly a privilege to be contesting from here. But the interesting thing is that I see that you're not just focused on telling what the achievements of the government, uh, the Modi government are, but you're also acknowledging the possible failure of the state government to implement certain things. Uh, as small as, you know, not cleaning the nalas. So it's technically it's not a concern for a member of parliament, but still you're doing that. Why is that? That is because I have a very honest commitment to mm -hmm. actually serve the people. This is my city. I'm a hardcore Delhiite. I was born and raised here. When I go on the campaign trail, every nook and corner, I can actually tell them I have a memory of this. And this is also a seat that I tell you my family is associated with. Mm -hmm. I am emotionally attached 
to Delhi and I am telling you this is my city I will do everything in my power to ensure that Delhiites have um, have dignity of life have a better quality of life and when you see that the Amadmi Party MLAs are actually not doing their job then as a voter of Delhi mm -hmm. if I do if I have been put in that privileged position of becoming an MP mm -hmm. I will do my job to raise these concerns today uh, we saw Swati Maliwal's case and uh, you know it's taken a very serious turn and it's possible that the PA to the chief minister would have uh, very badly assaulted her. In a state where possibly even the former head of PCW and a Rajya Sabha member is not safe, how do we ensure safety to citizens? There are two separate issues uh, that is raised in this question. First, it is flabbergasting and shocking that the Honorable Chief Minister Sri Arvind Kejriwal continues to maintain a very deafening silence mm -hmm. on the issue of Ms. Swati Maliwal being assaulted at his own residence by the OSD of the Honorable Chief Minister. Mm -hmm. If the Chief Minister cannot ensure the safety of his own Rajya Sabha member and a woman Karakarta of his party, how will he ensure the, uh, the safety of women in Delhi? Not only that, Mr. Kejriwal has not taken any action. In fact, he's traveling with the accused. And it is shocking. It seems like he has zero commitment towards taking any action of any sort. Mm. It's almost as if he's encouraging the accused. Now, regarding you talking about safety of people again, mm. uh, I think we should have this conversation again in December because come July 2024, right. the new laws are going to come in force. The earlier laws, the IPC, CRPC and the Evidence Act are basically a piece of legislation that we've inherited from the colonial rule. The British made it to rule us and therefore at the heart of it is not justice. It is basically a, a, a set of laws which were made to, to cull any kind of rebellion, to basically ensure that we are subdued. And I think for the first time since independence, uh, Bharat is going to get laws which has been kept Bharatiya in, in mind and uh, which stems from Bharatiya ethos. So that is going to have tremendous deterrence value because these laws are drafted in a very, in a way which is very clear right. as well as the very strict in nature. I think that will really help ensure safety of their girls. Uh, many people are saying that you know they see traces of your mother uh, when you're campaigning and many media reports have also mentioned that and Shishmaji also contested from Karnataka and she's had a big influence in Karnataka as well. While you're campaigning, is there any uh, you know, pearls of wisdom that you remember from your mother? I think the biggest life lesson that my mother gave me was to be fearless mm -hmm. and to give it your best and leave everything else to Because the only thing in your control is your karma. The results are never in your power. Very good luck to you. Thank you.